welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Christy. And I'm Charlotte. We are so glad that you are here with us today. Ah! We're doing seafood freezer Yay, meals. Seafood. There's a lot of really great seafood recipes, but seafood isn't like the number one dish here. So no. sometimes it's a hard sell a little bit. They're not yeah. super popular, not like ground beef or something. No, and not a lot of people grew up eating seafood. So and Unless really you're on the coast. Exactly, where right. you live. So if you're not really a seafood person or if you're not sure, then we do encourage you to maybe give something a try. Sometimes it can be really mild. Um, I know some people that will eat salmon, that won't eat other fish, or they'll eat like shellfish, but not other fish. So, you know. There might be something you could dip your toe in. Totally. Or I would say one of the more mild or less seafood tasting recipes that we've got today is our Salsa Verde fish tacos. If you right. like tacos, you like salsa verde, and it's not a spicy one. It's not a spicy salsa. It's a green salsa. That's what then verde means. You might want to give this a try mm -hmm. just because it's, again, it's just like dipping your toe in. It's mild, and and because it's a taco, you're building it at, on the day of. And, okay, at our house when we have tacos, I will make all of the things like all in the little bowls, but my son will really just have the beef and the cheese and occasionally I can like, like mm -hmm. batter him into having like a tomato on it or something. But you can do it the opposite where you, you can have all of your chopped lettuce or your chopped um, cabbage and just a little bit of fish. Right. And then you just, you just try smother it. it with your spicy mayo and you'll be fine. <laughs> try it in one corner. Okay. Try it on a corner. <laughs> taco, right? Dip your toe into seafood. It'll be fantastic. So with that, why don't we get into the recipes? We'll leave that one for last so you that look you forward stick to around. It. <laughs> but this first recipe is our shrimp fajitas. And the great thing about this is that they can be a sheet pan meal so you can just toss everything on your sheet pan that means you're only dirtying one dish Yay. and less dishes is always a happy day but they can also be an air fryer meal so if you're one of those people mm -hmm. that got an air fryer for christmas like christy did then you can use that for this so for this one you're going to need two freezer bags you're going to put some frozen shrimp in one freezer bag and you're going to put your vegetables in the other so that's going to be a sliced onion sliced yellow and red pepper and then you're going to set those bags aside for a second in a bowl you're going to mix together some lime juice fajita seasoning and olive oil. Now you can buy fajita seasoning in packets or from, we get ours from Bulk Barn, or you can make your own. We actually have a video that shows a fajita seasoning recipe and how easily you can make that and you can freeze it if you'd like to have it stay fresh for longer. Once you've mixed together your marinade, you're gonna divide that between the two bags. So you're gonna put half the marinade in with the shrimp and half in with the vegetables. Then you're going to take the excess air out of both of those bags because anytime you're doing freezer cooking, air is what causes your freezer burn. So you're just gonna be really careful to get all the air that you can out of those bags. You're gonna staple those bags together above the seal so that they stay together in your freezer and freeze them. Then on the day that you go to cook this, you're gonna thaw it and you're going to put some parchment paper down either on your sheet pan or in your air fryer. You're gonna, if you're doing an air fryer, you're gonna set the air fryer to 375, cook the vegetables for three minutes, and then you're gonna increase your temperature to 400 and add that shrimp and just cook it for another six to seven minutes, stirring one time. Or if you're doing this on a sheet pan, you're just going to cook your vegetables for 10 minutes in the oven, and then you're gonna add the shrimp on there and just cook it for another six to eight minutes. You'll know your shrimp is done when it pinks up and curls, and you don't wanna overcook shrimp, so you wanna grab it out when you see that happen. You're gonna serve this on flour tortillas with any of your regular fajita toppings that you like. So this could be 
some fresh cilantro, some, um, if you wanna add more crunch, you could add some thinly sliced purple onion. You could you do some cotija cheese or some guacamole. You could even add some fruit salsa, like mango or pineapple salsa to this would be really nice. This next recipe is seafood curry pasta. And it is a bit of a weird one because it's got pineapple juice in it. We did not see that coming, but it is imperative to have it in this recipe. Um, and it is a nice one um, because it, it is a curry, but it's very mild and it is a fast one to put together on the day of cooking. So in one bag, you're going to have your scallops and your frozen or your raw shrimp. And you can do tail on, but we prefer tail off. In the other bag, we're going to put in some sliced onions, some sliced mushrooms, some sun-dried tomatoes, which is really great because it just gives it an extra pop of flavor. And usually we chop these and drain them so that they aren't just big chunks of the, the tomatoes. We're gonna add in just a little bit of curry powder. Here's the pineapple juice and some cream of mushroom soup and evaporated milk. Now we're gonna mix all that around together in your freezer bag and then seal it up and we're going to staple the two bags together. Again, getting all that excess air out. You want to staple above the line so that you don't get holes in your bag. On the day of cooking, you're gonna do two things. You're going to cook your pasta to package directions and you are going to thaw and empty the big bag into a pot on the stove and you're gonna bring that to a boil. Meanwhile, once it's good and bubbly, you can drain your scallops and shrimp because as they thaw, they're gonna have like seafood juice, which sounds not great. So you can even rinse them. And then put those in to your bubbling curry that's happening here. And really within that seven to 10 minutes, they're gonna to be totally cooked add in that pasta, mix it all together and enjoy. This would be something else that I can tell you right now, Charlotte would add chili flakes to. Yes, I would. Yes, you would. And nothing and wrong with having some cheese to mm -hmm. this too. It is really good. This is a full meal when you add your pasta and the curry, I promise, is very mild. If you're not a curry person. It doesn't taste like a curry dish. It doesn't it taste like a curry dish. like an amazing pasta dish. Like it's just. This is restaurant, restaurant quality. <laughs> this is good food. And it's a nice treat for the scallops. Now here's something funny. Charla is the only person in our house that likes scallops. Yes. And so when we buy, like we go to Costco and we buy the scallops. We buy a bag of scallops and she has like one or two in hers and I get the rest. It's true. She just gives me like a little donation. She's like, just give me scallops. one and I always double it because I'm very generous. <laughs> I'm fat. And then, yeah, we uh, and I'm just... I'm the only one in my family that will eat them, but... That's, that's fine. It, it's bonus. It's good for me. I always get guaranteed at least two scallops. <laughs> and I get guaranteed a lot. That's right. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, it's a really good one. If, and you could serve this to people. It's so good. It's, and it's a full meal. Like this is a lot of food. There's almost always leftovers of this one. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. The chili lime cod is one we have been making forever and ever and ever. And it's just so good. I especially like it in the summer because it's a great barbecue recipe. Yeah, it is. And uh, I even like to do this one in my skillet. I've taken this one camping. Yeah, and me too. I've done foil packets oh, yeah. with this and some asparagus and done that. Did we do green campfire. beans? Yes, we did yes, last we year. Yes, we did last year. We yeah. have a camping video. We, should, we do. We will put a link for that. We did a camping video and the, these were in it with the green beans. Mm -hmm. It was so good. Amazing. Now, these there's some heat in these. Yeah, these, it's got a little kick. It's it, not overpowering. It's not overpowering, but it's, but it's got a kick. Just so you know. So, so if that's the case, like it calls for a tablespoon of chili powder, then you put in a teaspoon instead of if your you family's like not spicy. gonna eat yeah. it, right? Yeah. Into your large resealable freezer bag, you're going to put a pound of your fish fillets. Now you can use cod, snapper, tilapia, really any white fish will work for this. We usually kind of price things out and see what seems to be on sale. Mm -hmm. And that's how we decide, really. Then you're gonna combine your other ingredients in a bowl and pour this over the fish, or 
you can pour the like pour the other ingredients right into your bag and then just really squish it a lot to combine the other ingredients. So the other ingredients are some lime juice, olive oil, minced garlic, chili powder. Again, that's the one tablespoon, so it's a fair amount. Uh, some brown sugar, paprika, pepper, and seasoning salt. I'm gonna put the full recipe down in the description below, so you don't have to be madly writing this out as I'm saying it, but you're gonna get your excess air out of that bag and seal it, freeze it. On the day you go to cook this, you can cook it in the skillet, in the oven or on the barbecue. So it is really easy. It cooks up quickly because fish does cook up quickly. So if you're making any sides with this, you might wanna do your sides first and cook this last. This next recipe is mustard crusted salmon. Now we have modified this to become a freezer meal recipe. This recipe was one I found on the internet years ago and I looked for it again recently because we had made it in our last mega session and like in our previous last mega yeah. session, not this last one that we just had. Ooh, we just like a month ago mm -hmm. we did a mega session. For those of you that are just new to our channel, a mega session is when Christy and I get together once every three months and we do three months worth of meals, like over a hundred meals. Over a hundred meals. And so we'll put a link to that right there. And that does have a bunch of seafood in it. Uh, it's got Cajun shrimp skewers. Mm -hmm. It's got two different kinds of salmon and it has the seafood curry. Those are the ones I can remember off the top of my head. There might be more, but it definitely does have some seafood recipes. So if you're a seafood fan, you want to check that out. But it also has... Beef, oh, beef ground beef, pork, chicken, chicken, everything, and Veg vegetarian. Yeah, we we do it all. A we wide variety. We're a full service sort of yes. um, freezer meal sort of group. Other than we um, just teach you how to make it because we don't come to your house, do we? No, we no. do not come and be freezer meal fairies in your kitchen. We are too busy for that and we have our own families to feed so we teach you how to do this for your family that's right and we hope that it empowers you to feel like you can do this but we don't come to stack your, your own kitchen. freezer <laughs> you can stack your you can do it if we can do it you can do it and it is the best thing we have done for ourselves absolutely it is the yeah. best thing ever because i never have to worry about what i'm gonna make at four o'clock no nope. i just went to my fridge from my freezer earlier in the day and Opened it up and picked something. Pulled something out. Bam, it's done. So this, this mustard crusted salmon, seriously, is how I learned how to cook salmon. Mm -hmm. And it gave step-by-step -step instructions. I printed them out and the website isn't up anymore and I'm a little bit sad about that, but it's okay. I still, we have freezer mealized it and I've made it my own. And this recipe is now, now that we've freezer mealized it and we've tested it and perfected it, it's now in our Freezer Meals 101 Club. So the link for that will be down below as well. That's right. So we're gonna start out with our salmon. Now, when I first learned how to make salmon, I would make a whole salmon at once and do this. But since we started making freezer meals, we portion out our salmon ahead of time so it fits in the bag better. Yes. So you could do this either way, but you would need a pretty big bag to do a whole fillet of your salmon. In a bowl, we are going to mix together your grainy mustard and olive oil. It's equal parts. I use three tablespoons and three tablespoons. You're gonna mix that up. You're gonna pour that right in on top of your salmon that's in the bag, and you're gonna mix it around so that it has a nice marinade for it. In a separate bag, we're going to put breadcrumbs, some dried parsley, some salt and pepper, and then we're gonna put a little drizzle of olive oil in there, like a teaspoon, and mix that around, and it's gonna help coat and season, but it's also gonna help crisp up on the day that you go to cook this. So you're gonna take out the excess air, you're gonna staple those bags together above the seal, and on the day of cooking, you're gonna let it thaw on a foil-lined baking sheet. You're gonna lay out your salmon that has all the marinade on it, and then you're gonna sprinkle those breadcrumbs evenly over your salmon fillets. This one you wanna bake in your oven at about 400 for 20, 25 minutes, depending on how thick your salmon is. You want it to be able to flake easily with a fork. And it is delicious. The breadcrumbs will get nice and crispy, and that salmon, the mustard has marinated, and this is a really just nice, light, wonderful salmon dish. It is. It really is. 
We have quite a lot of salmon recipes because yeah, salmon is so healthy for you and it's... Get those omegas, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. And our families will eat it and you always feel so good when you can get like those good nutrients into your kids, right? Yeah. That's and right. so over the years, we have developed more and more and more salmon recipes to yep, the point we really where have. we have quite a variety. And this one, you could serve with asparagus. You could serve with any kind of vegetable, really. Yeah. Um, it goes nice with rice, but it also goes nice with, like, honestly, just the humble boiled potato. There's nothing wrong with that, and that is a really nice thing to serve with this. Mm-hmm. Now, as promised... <laughs> <laughs> Our Salsa Verde fish tacos, if you've stuck around this long, I appreciate it because this recipe is a really nice mm -hmm. way to just get started into getting some seafood into your diet. So in a large resealable freezer bag, you're going to put three or four fish fillets. You just want to use some kind of a white fish. So again, a cod, a snapper, a tilapia, a bassa, anything like that. Then you're going to add in some salt, some pepper, some salsa verde. You just get that in a jar at your grocery store, some crushed pineapple and garlic. You're gonna squish that to combine it in your bag and then you're gonna take out the excess air, seal it and freeze it. On the day that you go to make this, you're gonna thaw it and you are just going to fry this up in a skillet until it flakes easily. It's like 10 or 12 minutes. It is done so fast. And you're gonna serve it in your taco shells. You can use hard shell or soft depending on what you prefer. And you're just gonna do it with your regular toppings that you would have with your tacos. So we like to do it with cabbage or coleslaw because it's the fish taco, so mm -hmm. that's really nice. Um, a sriracha mayo or a chipotle mayo is really nice as well. Some diced tomatoes, green or purple onions. Now we almost always serve this with a mango or pineapple salsa because you've already got the pineapple in right. there although it's not a strong flavor of pineapple nope. but it's just a little zip and so it just goes really well you can also do shredded carrots any kind of salsa or pico de gallo um we like to do serrano peppers you could do jalapenos or if you're not a spicy person you skip that altogether. um if even you want, just a good squish of Lime. Oh, lime is so good mm -hmm. on this. And of course, like avocado or guacamole is always going to be good. And if you're a cilantro person, you can add some fresh cilantro. There's so many ways that you can kind of fancy this up or or make it simple. So we've got a whole list of topping suggestions in the recipe, and we're gonna put the link to the recipe again in the description below. So check that out. And if you're new to seafood, maybe give this one a try because it's just five simple ingredients so fast to put together and hopefully you or your family will love it and that's it that is our wide variety actually it is a pretty wide variety mm -hmm. of seafood we're gonna put a link right there to a video that is all ground beef recipes because if seafood's <laughs> not your thing and you made it this be. far <laughs> the thank beef you. might be <laughs> thank you for joining us today we appreciate any time that you spend with us it makes it so much more fun yeah it us. really does it does and um thanks for coming by today we'll see you later happy cooking